Yes, I can. Loud and clear. Thank you. No worries. So we're asking all the fighters what it's been like so far since you guys have gotten down there. Have you noticed any differences other than, like the other fighters were like, yeah, other than sticking a swab up our nose as soon as we got to the hotel. I was just wondering what your experience has been like so far since you arrived. Pretty cool, man. I get to wear a cool little mask like this, like Sub-Zero, and, you know, obviously like Scorpion, you know, they give me super super. <laughs> so it's not bad, man. It's kind of quiet. Uh same mental thing is still there. We're focused. We're here for UFC 249. Sure, your, your mentality is still there. It's the same, but have you noticed like your surroundings being different? I think somebody um, described it as being like deserted or something like that. That you know you could tell like something's a little bit different. No, absolutely not. I don't feel any more different myself. I always went to and from work. Obviously, nothing has changed. Um, I've been more on top of my strength and conditioning, and even here. I'm not paying attention to anything else besides smiling and making sure that people understand that we're here for everybody else, man. We're true athletes, and we're going to make sure it happen this weekend. Cool. Thank you. Wow. Well, next up, we will have Caroline Pierce from BT Sport. Hey, Caroline, can you move your eyebrows like this? Looking good, Tony. Look, i got to ask you, having done your weigh-in a couple of weeks ago now, and just now being a day away from weighing in for the real thing, you know, is there a part of you that's feeling any effects from that, that self-imposed weight cut, if you like? No, absolutely not. I'm used to just following through with what I say. Obviously, uh, hold on real quick. Uh, no, man, I'm going to be real with the weight cut. It was very nice to be able to do that a pre-cut. Um, prepared mentally, and uh, it was nice to be able to do something without anybody jocking my style. It was cool. Nobody else in the world was doing that, so on the 18th, we saved sports, and we kept going, and we obviously parlayed that for UFC 249. You obviously have the change in opponent, but with the fight then being put back a little bit further, you had more time to prepare for Justin Gaethje. We know that you prepare for several guys at once. You know, you're not just focused on one person, but are there any particular tweaks or changes that you're making specifically for Justin? Absolutely not. I'm not worried about what they're doing. I watched a lot of films. He's got a lot of holes in this game. Uh, I'm a veteran in the sport. I got 12 wins in a row only because I lost to Michael Johnson. No, I'm not planning on losing anytime soon. My work ethic speaks for itself. And uh, I'm an ultimate fighter winner, man. In order to be the best, you have to beat everybody. It's a round robin tournament. tournament. Uh, Justin Gaethje's next. And he specifically requested an elbow breaks his nose so that the UFC can pay for his surgery and he can breathe through that nose again. Are you willing to oblige? No, oh, absolutely not. He just doesn't want me to punch him in the stomach. That's that. <laughs> do you think that's de a deferring strategy to, to get you to sort of not do what he's asking for? No, man. Obviously, I have nothing against the kid. He's awesome, man. He, he's got the human highlight for his nickname for a reason. The tough game opponent, man. But uh, the guys that he fought, he got my leftovers. And he went over there and he finished them, but they were already broken. Anytime I've ever fought an opponent, they just break mentally and physically and spiritually. They just can't, they just can't handle inside that octagon. He's not going to be anything different from these guys. I'm not going to hold back. Punches, knees, kicks, and elbows. I'm bringing out the blades for this fight. Yeah, we know you have many different ways in which you can win this fight, though. But what would be the most satisfying way to get your hand raised? Uh, I'm, you know, uh, anytime I, I called it, uh, it, it usually happened. I'm not going to call it out right now. Uh, I'm not going to worry about what anybody else thinks. I'm going to go in there and do my thing, and we have five rounds. So this is total all five, but if not, we'll see how it happens. This is for the interim title, and a chance for you to get that interim belt back, but you're calling this the real title. You're not seeing this as, as an interim belt, is that correct? Absolutely not. The casuals would think that, and that's uh, something I've uh, give fair play, and uh, obviously I made that up. But my hardcore understand exactly that I do have the belt. I shouldn't have been stripped. You got good old meathead, fucking fathead Khabib. He didn't want to fight. He ran away like a dog between his, with his tail between his legs. Same thing with Connor. I'm going to be next. I'm going to be next is what everybody said, but where the fuck are they at? Obviously, they're back home and trying to quarantine. Obviously, we're here crushing quarantine. I'd be remiss not to ask you, do you think this fight with Habib will ever happen? I don't give a shit. To me, that guy doesn't even exist. The fight that's going to happen is at UFC 249. It's going to be on pay-per-view or ESPN+, Plus, and it's going to be amazing, man. So make sure you guys buy it and uh, eat that social distancing by high-fiving and giving each other hugs. Thank you so much, Tony. Where is 
Uh, next, we have Heidi Thang Divine from Las Vegas Review Journal. Heidi, you've yeah. muted. Okay, so Tony, just what was the process like for you just over into uh, Florida and just making the trip out there? Like, how has it been like, you know, with the different circumstances around the world trying to get there? Uh, it was cool, man. I'm going to be real. I still have my same crew. If anything, I, I made it a little bit bigger. I brought them out here. And uh, as far as expenses and everything else, I, it's the same exact thing, man. Nothing else has changed for myself. Obviously, it's a little bit more quiet, and obviously, we don't have any fans. But to me, this reminds me of being in Vegas for the Ultimate Fighter Tournament. No. He said uh, it doesn't matter to you, so if you should come out victorious, is there anybody else that's on your radar? Hold on, lady. I'm, I'm still talking. I'm going to be real. Oh, sorry. Get in here. That's cool. The only reason that everything else is like this is uh, the only reason we're fighting is for the fans. So nothing else is changing. If anything else, my game is more serious. And just about Habib, if you can't fight him, who else is on your radar as defending the title for? If you should win it um, come Saturday. Who? If you should take the interim belt. Just kidding. I got you. It's not an interim belt. I have another belt. But I like to collect trophies. I got a whole bunch of medals from back in the day, and that's from a three-sport athlete. I do the exact same thing. I'm not worried about a piece of hardware. You know what I mean? It's more, more than a paper plate, but I have the real title. You've just got, I don't know what the hell he's got. I just, said, I just told him to sit it down and walk away, whatever he has. Like I said, too, we don't exist to me right now. All right, thank you, Tony. Next up, we have Carlos Contreras. Carlos, you've been unmuted. Hi, Tony. Hello, what's up, Carlos? Hey, uh, what's up? I mean, um, we're really close to uh, Cinco de Mayo, and we're having three uh, Mexican Americans on the on the on the two championship uh, fight. What does it tell for for you for uh, or or the importance of, of Mexican Americans or Mexican fighters in, in, in this sport? Si nosotros están listos, estoy uh, listo para este fin de semana y uh, I'm ready. Doesn't matter if there's uh, Latinos on this card or not, I'm true Mexican and I'm going to go out there and represent my, my country as America made with Mexican parts. But uh, when we, if, if you see that your style, the, the, the fact that you always come in uh, uh, front and, and exchanging. When we say that you have this Mexican style of, of, of boxing when, when you're standing up, right? I like to I like to dance a little. You know, obviously when you're having a good time at the barbecue and you hear good music, they can, uh, you're doing the right thing. I just I just hope the fans do the same thing. That they get the rhythm back in their lives and they feel like sports is back. We're bringing it back UFC UFC 249 this weekend. Justin seems like uh, this perfect uh, this perfect. Uh, dance partner for, for, for what you were saying, uh, right? Like he, he likes to exchange and, uh, I mean, it's going to be a big, a big stage for you, for, for, for the, the Tony Ferguson uh, persona, like the, the people that are eager to, to, to watch sports are going to see this amazing fight that, uh, like Dana uh, was saying yesterday, it, it, it's not, there's no possibility of, for this not to be a good fight. No, absolutely not. We're scheduled for five rounds, but like I said before, if he pisses me off, we'll take him to deep waters. Uh, the dude's an awesome guy. I mean, I have no nothing, no guff against him. He's an opponent. They call him a human highlight for a reason, and uh, we're going to go out there, and every fight that we always had, it's going to be fight of the night. Uh, I have no doubt in my mind that Dana was right. Thank you, Tony. Of course, sir. Next up, we have Andrew Whitelaw. Andrew, you there? Hey, mate. What's up, Andrew? How you doing? Hello, mate. How you doing? I was wondering if uh, you feel appreciated for everything you do in the octagon. A lot of hype around this one. A lot of talk about how entertaining you and Justin are. Do you feel appreciated? Absolutely, I feel appreciated, man. I'm going to be real. As soon as I talked to the UFC brass, they told him I'm a badass motherfucker, and they told me, you know what, I stand up for the company, and I'm a company man, man. Teamwork makes the dream work, so uh, I'm just happy to be a part of it and then be back with uh, my crew, which is the UFC, man. I love seeing the familiar faces, and it's uh, it's an honor to be here and be in the main event. Your record is impressive. You've beaten some of the best. Do you think a lot about your legacy in the sport? What does a big win over Justin do for that legacy? I don't have, have any legacy. I don't fight for legacy. I fight for my faith, family, and friends. I mean, I can give a shit who's going to put in front of me. I'm the ultimate fighter, and it's a tournament. 
you're going to be the best, you have to beat the best. And I said that since day one. Casuals and the hardcore, I obviously know that. Have you planned out what you want to get done this year, or is it a bit difficult with everything that's going on? No, man, I've been preparing since September for Khabib, and then uh, when that stuff fell out, I still made weight on the 18th. Not one other fighter opted to do that same thing. They're like, why, why, why? But people that ask why, like I said, they don't understand the game, they don't understand the professionalism. I'm a champion. When I sign on dotted line for something like that, I get committed to that thing. And uh, we got a new game opponent for May, May 9th, and uh, like I said before, Khabib and McNuggets, they don't exist to me. The only person right now that really matters, Austin Gabe. You're 249 this weekend. David Goggins was giving you a massive shout out for making that weight and testament to your character. How important is it to you that you did that? I'm going to be real. It doesn't matter who gives me props, but uh, David Goggins is obviously a savage. And uh, one thing he says is stay hard. That's how we train, that's how we prepare, and uh, that's how I fight, man. We're always like that. David Goggins, awesome. Thank you, mate. Next, we are, we'll have Leslie Wilson Jr. from Golf News. Leslie, you've been a... Oh, what's up, Leslie? How are you doing? I'm good, Tony. Listen, uh, first of all, I want to ask you, um, I'm from India. I work in Dubai. I have a lot of Mexicano friends who I work with, and I know how tough you guys are. But having said that, there are two words that was always intrigued me. I'm curious about fear and pain. It's something that I felt all my life. But you guys don't seem to understand how do you, how to spell these words. What what is psyche about fear and pain that doesn't exist in your in your mind? Can you repeat the question, sir? Yeah, I said. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I just didn't really understand what you were saying. Okay, sorry about it, Tony. Yeah, I said uh, I'm from India. I work in. Du Thank you, pardon. Yes, I can. I can hear you now. Okay, okay. I'm from India. I work in Dubai. And some of my best friends are from Mexico, Americanos, so I know how tough you guys are. But you know something, I've always been intrigued by two words that mean, you know, natural emotions that I have, which are fear and pain. But it's something that you fighters don't do. What is, what is it to do with lack of fear and lack of pain? Were you born with that? Obviously, I was born with that. Obviously, um, I've... Uh, be real. It doesn't matter what race anybody is. If you're a tough athlete and you go out there and you give it your best, you're gonna you're gonna go out there and just how, how if you competed when you were little, man. It's if you ran away or did you go back towards the storm. In this fight and even at home, my all my life I never ran away. I'm a defensive back. I was always cracking the heads and making sure I made those tackles. If the offense couldn't score points, the defense. We were intercepting, blocking punts and blocking field goals. We're doing everything we can. Goal line, baby. We go out there and we get that W. As far as being Mexican, Latino, it's awesome, man. I'm American, with Mexican, made with Mexican parts. Off as fuck. And, um, with all due respect to Jackson, this, in, this wasn't the fight we really wanted. Uh, obviously, we want the Khabib at one point. Oh, man, I didn't want the Khabib. Fight. Somebody, I'm going to be real. Why do I want to fight somebody? Prior to this, prior to this. I'm going to be real. I don't want to fight yeah, somebody. I'm just, I'm fight. just looking backwards, yeah. But, but the fact that you've got Jackson in front of you now, has this in any way affected the way you train, the intensities that you have been bringing to the gym every day? Nothing changed? No, absolutely not. I made weight on the 18th. Nobody else made weight. Like I said, that dude didn't show up, man. He ran away. He got scared. He could have stayed here. He could have trained. The fights were going to be right. north, and then they were going to be somewhere else. He didn't have it up here. The dude didn't want to make weight. I called him out again. Yeah. Uh, I said that it doesn't matter anymore. He goes, you know what? The hat you can throw it away with your belt. Yeah. Listen, we've got a lot of Mexicans living in Dubai as well. We'll be watching the fight together. Uh, any shout out for guys in Dubai for big fans of yours, hopefully? Así que nosotros están listos para este fin de semana y si a nosotros están suerte para pelear este fin de semana. It means basically we're very lucky to be able to fight this weekend and. Uh, very fortunate to have sports back, man, and I'm very honored to be the main event. And uh, undercard is going to be awesome, man. Uh, you can't really call it undercard. The whole entire car is going to be awesome. Everybody needs to buy that UFC 249 event. Thank you, Tony. God bless you. Thank you. Stay safe. Okay. Uh, last question will go to Fabrizio Sosa from ClearEnd.com. Fabrizio, you're unmuted. Fabricio, what's good, man?
you you it's uh, been many years sorry for my bad english sir. no man you too, man enjoy it let's go it's, it's been many years since uh, your defeat uh, to michael shanson is the winning streak uh, an special motivation for you no, i really don't think so i stopped paying attention to that a long time ago um when I get out taking a shower, usually I'll leave a message either for my wife or what I'll do is the same thing that I since I started since Ultimate Fighter. I always put like be sharp or be actually be on point is what I say. Yes. Be phenomenally inspiration or do something like that. I write focus one way and I write focus on the off of it and I do something else. And I point. I do it sixteen and one with an arrow, seventeen and one. I don't pay attention to anything else besides the next fight. As far as a win streak goes, I can give two fucks about it. I'm going to be real. Only thing I care about is going out there, giving my best, and try to get that W. Win away. Win or lose, I'm going to walk away like a man. And that's how you are an athlete, a true athlete. Okay. Uh, is, uh, Justin Gaethje uh, is a good striker, but uh, also a good uh, wrestler. What is your strategy you, uh, you propose? I'm going to be real. I'm a two time All American. I'm a national champion. I'm a state champion and three time All State wrestling as far as football goes we were state champs and we were runner up at the state for baseball i'm a mechanic like for as far as like my business like my body i'm a mechanic man so if something's wrong i'm gonna fix it but uh, this whole entire camp we've been preparing since uh november multiple 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 training uh i've increased everybody think i was training what like five to six hours no i don't think so man more like 12 i put in my time i always make sure that everything else is running right and uh like I said, it doesn't matter who you put in front of me, but this weekend is Justin Gaethje, the highlight. My name is Tony Alcacui Ferguson at UFC 249. You can expect fireworks just like Dana White said. And Tony, the last one. Uh, what do you know about the Argentina? You know, uh, uh, I'm a fighter. And My name is Justin Gaethje, the highlight. My name is Tony Alcacui Ferguson at UFC 249. You can expect fireworks just like Dana White said. What happened here? What happened? You, uh, w well, what do what you know about Argentina? What are you talking about? Say, what, say the question one more time. Yes, uh, I say, uh, what do you uh, know about Argentina? Argentina's awesome, man. Latinos, man. It's going to be awesome. Like, I'm going to be real. I can't wait to visit the country. I hear the food's amazing. And uh, obviously, I'd like to visit the world more. And uh, that'd be one of the stops I'd like to come and see. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony.